as you've seen, the hypothesis trees and the weights for different hypotheses are identical to when we performed PMBM filtering. However, one important difference is that the Bernoulli components in the multi-Bernoulli mixtures now describe the distributions over trajectories and Understanding how these Bernoulli distributions can be computed and approximated is key to understanding how PMBM trackers work. The short story is that these Bernoulli random finite sets describe the distribution of a single potential trajectory given a sequence of associations. Please note that we here condition on a specific data association hypothesis. For instance, Suppose that, according to a local hypothesis, one potential object is associated to the measurements Z1, Z3, and Z4. The trajectory for this potential object would then be a Bernoulli random finite set that contains a trajectory with probability 1, since it's been detected multiple times. The trajectory must also be present, at least from time 1 to time 4, since it was detected both at time 1 and time 4. It therefore holds that beta must be 1. If we consider the set of trajectories at time 4, it also holds that epsilon is 4, which implies that the single trajectory density for the Bernoulli random finite set, capital boldface x4, is delta beta minus 1 times delta epsilon minus 4 times the distribution over the state sequence x beta to epsilon, given the values of beta and epsilon. As indicated by the subindex 4 given 4, the distribution over the state sequence is also conditioned on the measurement sequence Z1, Z3, and Z4. The main message that I would like to convey here is that since these Bernoulli random finite sets are conditioned on a specific sequence of measurements, it's quite simple to compute their distributions. For instance, computing the distribution P4 given 4 in the above example can be performed using a karma filter applied on the vector x beta to epsilon. A disadvantage with the above approach is that the complexity grows with the length of the trajectory. For instance, we assume that data is processed recursively, and every time we include a new measurement in a local hypothesis, we need to update the spatial PDF of the entire state sequence. This corresponds to performing a karma filter update of the entire vector x beta to epsilon. If epsilon minus beta is large, this vector is long, and it then becomes expensive to perform the karma filter updates. This means that we eventually need to introduce approximations. Let us look at another toy example, and use that to introduce a very simple approximation. Consider a local association hypothesis, where Z1, Z2, and Z3 are all associated to the same potential object. To compute the posterior of the state sequence x1 to x3, given z1 to z3, in a recursive manner, we can first compute the distribution of the state sequence given z1 and z2, and then perform, say, a karma filter update using the measurement z3. However, the complexity of this increases with the length of the sequence. A simple approximation to this posterior is to approximate the states x1, x2, and x3 as independent in the posterior and pretend that measurements do not convey any information about past states. Specifically, in this example, we could approximate the posterior as p of x3 given z1 to 3 times p of x2 given z1 to 2 times p of x1 given z1. If the distributions are Gaussian, the posterior is then fully determined by the moments x hat 1 given 1, p 1 given 1, x hat 2 given 2, p 2 given 2, and so on. I'd like to make a few remarks here. First, these moments depend on the association sequence, and the moments therefore depend on the local hypothesis. Also, the fact that we are considering a state sequence from time 1 to time 3 is of course just an example, and the time interval will also depend on the local hypothesis. Interestingly, the computational complexity for handling the Bernoulli components no longer grows with epsilon minus beta. And since these moments are also computed in the PMBM filters, this approximation enables us to develop a PMBM tracker with roughly the same complexity as a PMBM filter. 
We will use this approximation in one of the simulation examples, and I'll then refer to the resulting algorithm as a PMBM tracker without smoothing. By the way, solving the assignment problem is often the most computationally demanding part of the algorithm, and it's possible to use better approximations than the one mentioned above without changing the overall complexity significantly. Before considering how the PMBM tracker performs in different examples, I'd like to mention another way to think about the relation between PMBM trackers and PMBM filters. Suppose you have a trajectory Bernoulli random finite set with parameters r k given k prime and p k given k prime of x, where p k given k prime is the single trajectory density. We can then factorize the single trajectory density into a probability mass function of beta and epsilon times a distribution over the state sequence x beta to epsilon, given the values of beta and epsilon. Now, given the distribution over the set of trajectories, we can use a type of marginalization to figure out the distribution of the set of objects at time k. Not surprisingly, since we have at most one trajectory, we also have at most one object present at time k. In fact, the set of objects at time k is a Bernoulli random finite set with parameters r m k given k prime and p m k given k prime, as described here. The exact expressions are less important for what I'm about to explain, but this is one example of how we can obtain the distribution of the set of objects at one time from the distribution of the set of trajectories. Interestingly, given the PMBM posterior over the set of trajectories, we can always perform a marginalization to obtain the PMBM posterior over the set of objects. This result also holds for the predicted PMBM distribution. As illustrated in the figure, given a predicted trajectory PMBM distribution, we can perform a marginalization and then an update to obtain the posterior object PMBM distribution. However, we can also first perform an update to obtain the posterior trajectory PMBM distribution and then marginalize that distribution to obtain the posterior object PMBM distribution. This further clarifies the close connection between the PMBM trackers and the PMBM filters. In fact, one way to think about the relation is that the PMBM filters have access to the trajectory information, but marginalize out the history in every prediction step. In the PMBM trackers, we extend the trajectories during the prediction step instead of marginalizing out the past. And this enables us to estimate trajectories and even compute the posterior distribution over the set of trajectories. 